Whoa, love that pop. The Tuesday night pop. Wow, and it's, one's going down already. I love it. Cowboy Jack Durango does not care about pacing himself tonight. <laughs> There's no pacing ever, baby. There's no pacing ever. It's the World <laughs> Series. It is the World Series. We are your perfect companion to game six of the World Series. Um, you know, uh, you, you can't plan these things. You know, we, we were against game one. Um, we're against uh, this game. Our good friend, uh, Top Gun Talwar and his wife is, is actually in Houston. He's a big Braves fan. So he is there tonight. And um, yeah, so it is what it is. We're so glad that you joined joined us tonight, and uh, we're gonna make uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna make it really special. Um, we know we're going against the World Series, the biggest games uh, of the season, uh, but we're just gonna go for it. We're gonna do this, right, dude? Absolutely. This is the biggest night in baseball because it's the night of the beer baseball broadcast, episode seventy nine. Cheers, everybody. Love it. Love it. From the top. Hey, Michael here from Beer Baseball Blog, The Adventures of Craft Beer and Baseball. This is the Beer Baseball Blogcast, episode 79. Can't believe it. For November 2nd, 2021, wherever you are watching us live today, please give us a like and a comment. Let us know that you're out there. And as always, we'd appreciate if you subscribe, turn on those notifications, get all of our updated content as soon as it comes to you, as soon as we put it out there. And uh, we thank you for being here. Some housekeeping before we start. Let's shout out our Patreon supporters. Thank you to Cowboy Jack Durango. Oh, that what, a, what a man. What a man. We love him. <laughs> we love him. Thank you for being on the power hitter level. We appreciate your support. Thank you also to Rachel Elnar for her contribution on the power hitter level. To Scott Lost on the cleanup hitter level, you can check out his comics and merchandise at accidentalaliens.com. And if sports cards on the leadoff hitter level, you can check out their YouTube channel of sports card breaks, pack openings, and mail days at if sports cards. And we are super excited this Saturday to have on November 6th at 12 p.m. Pacific to have if sport cards. That's Ian and Nikki from If Sports Cards from YouTube. We could not be happier to have them on our Hoppy Hour. This is episode nine. I can't believe that we've had nine episodes of the Hoppy Hour as well. So looking forward to that. And if you would like to become a Patreon supporter and support our efforts here at the Beer Baseball Blog, check out our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash beer baseball. You can also support us by buying stickers, buttons, and beer coasters on our Etsy page. Search Beer Baseball on Etsy. Here's the lineup card for today. He is the Goodwill Ambassador and the Sultan of Swig here at the Beer Baseball Blog. Cowboy Jack Durango, how you doing, man? I am doing wonderful, brother. Absolutely wonderful. Best damn night of the week every week. This is where it's at in baseball and craft beer. Love it. Love it. And this is going to be another fun one. Uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, that I love about this show is as much as I know about baseball, as much as I know about beer, it's always a learning experience every week when I do the research for the shows and this is no different. And cowboy, you're you're going to actually have some fun here because I'm going to test a bit of your knowledge about some, not even baseball or beer related things. So, uh, oh. be, be ready, be ready. Oh. I was born ready. By the <laughs> way, I had never seen a picture from of Ian from If Sports Cards before. Oh, what what a heartthrob, huh? <laughs> Nikki, watch your back because if I ever met him, I'm coming for him. Look at that man; he's beautiful. <laughs> he is a super supporter. Actually, uh, both Ian and Nikki are super supporters. Um, I need to check the chat; they might even be there for all I know. Uh, yes, they are. Of course, uh, they're they're super supporters of our show. Uh, they've actually shouted us out on their uh, YouTube channel, which I, we could not be more thankful for. And uh, we look forward to having them and testing their knowledge of baseball and craft beer. Um, you know, let's let's uh, while we're at it, let's uh, quickly let's shout out the other people out here. Bubble Pug, Bubble a, a Pug, our MVP. Yes, absolutely. Oh, and even. 
the beer baseball blog has given us a, a cheer. Up. <laughs> yeah. So that, that means my girlfriend is watching because good for her. I'm, I'm super, uh, that, now that support right there. She's in the other room. Uh, cheers to cheers, you. Cheers, Mel. Yeah. Uh, David, thank you so much. Um, we appreciate uh, you all the time. You, uh, a faithful watcher of the Beer Baseball blog. Yeah, yeah, and she's on her own account too, so she's she's cheering. Love it. Yeah, happy happy hour hype. Let's get it going. Let's get the hop train going. Yeah, yes. hop train. See what I did there? Yes. Are you guys going to be doing uh, card sharks? We're going to be doing card sharks. Um, you know, Ian loves the uh, this day in baseball, um, oh. and uh, and Nikki loves the trivia. So, I mean, this is going to be a well-rounded show. So, this might be a four-hour show. Um, I, 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 hope, uh, <laughs> I hope not. I, I hope we'll we'll let them go in in a decent amount of time. But but these hoppy hours they sometimes uh, are extended. Oh yeah, no, I know. I've done two of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be ignoring my children, just zoned in and watching it. I can't wait. Perfect, perfect. Well, Kevin Lyon is, um, yeah, he's not here right now. He's going to be here uh, shortly or at the same height. Uh, that's, an, <laughs> that's a very old joke. Um, so, Cowboy Jack Durango, let, let's just get into it. Let's get into it. What are you drinking tonight? Whoa, boom. What I am drinking is from one of my favorite breweries, Huss Brewing Company. And you know that, I, you know, I like to take care of myself physically, being a former professional athlete and, you know, I mean, a golden god. So sometimes you got to back off the beer and you got to go into some seltzer. These are the Arizona Ranch Water Agave Hard Seltzers. And this is the Tangerine. 95 calories if you're on the keto diet. The taste is... Ah, chef's kiss. It's refreshing. It's for being in Arizona. It's it's the drink that you can just have a drink all day if you're out at the pool, maybe driving around on the golf course, not on the streets. It's a fantastic, fantastic seltzer. And I love seeing all these craft companies coming into the seltzer game. And it, it doesn't have a nutra sweet taste like a White Claw does. It's Oof, really, really, really good. Yeah, these are getting super popular. I mean, the hard seltzers you, you see everywhere now. Um, it, right. It's funny, the, the trends have gone from like, you know, like super IPAs and then, you know, the different things in, within beer, but it's been expanding out. I remember when glitter beer was like a, a huge thing. Have you, did you ever see those out there in Arizona? <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, they, they actually had glitter beers. And actually, I had one called Unicorn Farts. Um, which actually had the, the glitter in it, and it was it, it was uh, very rare. But um, edible uh, glitter, it, it's edible glitter. So it actually it's better when it's at the brewery because you can actually see the like it, it looks like you're drinking glitter. Sure. Um, and it was popular for a while, but it, it didn't. I didn't think it enhances the taste, and actually kind of turned me off a little bit to it. Um, but I could get into these. These look really super good and refreshing. And and you say that you don't drink them. Um, you don't drink them in uh, single numbers. You drink them in double numbers. Am I well, correct? yeah, I, yeah. I, I, you know, it's we're on number we're on number eight right now, and <laughs> we have five more to go. So, <laughs> using my advanced math skills, that's less than twenty more than five. So. Yeah. <laughs> So so how, so if you're on a keto diet and what you what you double you you go in double digits how does that work? Oh no, I'm not on the keto diet. Oh okay, sorry. No, sorry. I'm just saying if anybody out there's watching and they're on the keto diet, Got feel it. free to Got indulge. It. I'm on the uh, cheeseburger, pizza, and beer diet, sir. <laughs> I'm a former professional athlete. I take oh, yeah. care of myself. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. double so cheeseburger, double cheese, onions. <laughs> I get my vegetables in there. There you go. Exactly. So, um, yeah, and this is 100% gluten-free. So um, any any of you out there with celiac disease, um, you, you will love this one, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, it is. This is the second flavor of the ranch water that I've tried. And yeah. the first one was the lime. This one, the tangerine. It is so good. It 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 tastes like it's got a great tangerine taste, not like a chemically orange taste. It tastes like a tangerine. It's really, really good. Love it. Love it. I definitely uh I can't wait to try this. Um and uh 
and yeah so but but i also like i also want to try you know their their beer line of course so oh uh, the, the hus is hus is quickly becoming my favorite brewery nice nice on a, on a mass produced scale yes yeah so uh, perfect and and this was a, a real good uh variation i'm glad that you brought this one because it was great to hear about it yeah. so let's bring in here he is I'm sitting here waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. I'm like, I can finish my beer by the time Jack's done talking about his hus. You know? oh, oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Late to the Show. I, I literally sat down right when he said, you made your short joke. And I'm like, good timing. <laughs> and I was like, when you, when you sit on. down, do you have to climb up into the chair? Yes, I do. Okay. My legs okay. are dangling. It's like Lily Tomlin. Right, yeah. Michael? <laughs> that is a great reference. Thank you like so that much one. for that. I love that. You're, you're one. welcome. You. I do it just for you. <laughs> so what, what do you guys? Jack, what do you drink tonight? Well, I want to ask Jack. Do they sell those those seltzers in a in a baker's dozen? Because he said you're having 13 tonight. They're they That's have the six packs, and then they also have loose cans. So oh, okay. I'll grab I'll grab a six pack, and then I'll I'll fill up. You know, they have a take home. You know, six carton containers. You like so a couple. Mix... You like a couple loose ones. I get it. That's yeah. I, so yeah. I threw in some different loosies in there. I did like a, a ruby red grapefruit that I'm probably going to do next week. Um, right yeah. I, it, of course, a Scottsdale blonde, which is my favorite beer. Yeah, I think we've seen that one before. I, yes, actually, yeah. I think I might have even had that before. Yeah. But well, I was we definitely had it. Stuff. Yep. Yeah. So what do you guys think, Kevin? Year. I have a uh, year. It's a collaboration between two of our favorite breweries, Michael. Uh, Ale Smith out of San Diego, which we know for being the the 394 Tony Gwynn uh, Pale Ale or the Hazy Pale Ale, if you can find it. Along with uh, Beachwood Brewing, definitely <clears throat> favorite of ours out of the Long Beach area. And Michael's had, well, I have too, have had a few uh, Beachwood beers on the show. So I was like, oh, yeah, those two are coming together. That's going to be a really good beer. Heck, yeah. And it's a double dry hopped uh, West Coast style. IPA. I was surprised. It's uh, I thought it was by the. I thought it was gonna be higher. It's six point eight. I thought it was gonna be like a seven or eight percent. Yeah, I, I would. Have, I, I would have that hot. too. Right. I was like, oh, okay. I'm like, ah, this is easy. <laughs> yeah. But so yeah. far, it's great. I had to. I couldn't wait for Jack to finish talking about his seltzer. I had to get to drinking because I'll never <laughs> catch up to Jack even if I tried. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. It has Galaxy, Cashmere, and Nelson hops. Uh, two of our favorite breweries together uh i don't uh i don't know if i'm gonna get i'm surprised you didn't see this because i saw it at Trader joe's i i i was gonna say the yeah, same you're gonna thing have to get because, this i was surprised you haven't had it yet honestly and but but it, it actually says on here um it says improves with age and it says no so it might be a limited release so um definitely okay. I, and you're you're a big yeah because i actually got this like two weeks ago oh you got it two weeks ago okay Yes, of course. Of course. Nicely done. Yeah. Nicely um, done. So to read the description here, they've teamed up before, so I don't know what they did before. It says, we've teamed up again with our good friends at Beachwood Brewing to make this behemoth West Coast style IPA I, that has been double dry hopped with Galaxy, Cashmere, and Nelson Hops. This monstrous hop blend gives us beer intense notes of passion fruit, citrus, peach, and melon dubbed Tower of Flower. Tower of flower. So this IPA is built with a solid foundation for your enjoyment or mine tonight. Hopefully Kevin, are you a big Michael. Tower of Power fan? The I heard of that, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yes, of course. I can't name one some of them right now, but I know I know I know them. I'm sure yeah. I've heard the song I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I think I think they're like Chicago. They're, they're no zap. Uh, they're yeah, they're, they're no, no yeah, zap they're, though. You know Roger and Zap, that's for sure. Um exactly. Yeah, um, Ian's uh, loving the Jack's <laughs> comment about. Yeah, oh, yeah that, that was good. You gotta call Jack's a spade. Already a spade. Hot yeah, box. Yeah. Call a spade a spade, man. That guy is just pretty. <laughs> uh, he also likes what you did with the backdrop and uh, Jack uh, Durango with a ring light now. With, yeah, look at this beautiful. You can see my beautiful yeah. face, everybody. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> So my beer tonight is actually um, could be Jose Canseco's favorite beer. This is the state sponsored juicing hazy IPA from uh, not the Bash Brothers, oh, no. uh, but the Barrel Brothers uh, out of Windsor, California in Sonoma County. 
Uh, there you go. So you what can see it on cool screen. Can. Super cool. And uh, it's, you know, it's a hazy. It's pretty murky. So uh, um, 7% ABV, um, 40% IBU. I thought it would be higher in the IBUs, but it's actually, um, it's perfect. But but the description of it that they have is actually super accurate and super awesome. So check this out. So performance enhancing hops sprint towards a finish line of an intense tropicality with sustained citrus and luscious mangoey mandarin, mandarin orange flavors. Wrapped in a cloak of scandalous haze, this New England IPA takes the podium with pride and adorns the awards of carefully prescribed program making the case that state sponsored juicing can be a good thing. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that is so I wish they made t-shirts about like with that logo. Well, Jack, you you um this beer, if you love this beer and Kevin, well, I, I Kevin seems <laughs> is Kevin doing a pose right there or did he, uh, is Kevin uh, ah wow. we lost you know, Oh, okay. So so my high spot is is missed uh, and I I'm going to vamp because I have to um I have to wait till he gets back in. Oh yeah, he's at it says he's having issues, but um, I wanted to, if, if you like this beer, you, I, I, you wait till you see the next beer. I have to have Kevin on this one because um, as I've said it before, um, if he has socks, um, they're going to get blown off. Hey, hey that's weird. I was frozen like forever. I, I, just looked up, like, I'm, I logged off a minute ago and I'm still frozen. <laughs> All right, Kevin, you're going to, okay. So. Jack loves this beer. He loves the merchandise. They actually have yes. some cool uh, imagery and stuff like that. Yes. Kevin, are you ready? Now, this is the beauty of the Beer Baseball blog. Yes. We get one beer, and this is, this beer is courtesy of my girlfriend who got it from uh, Total Wine. Oh, right. So I, I wouldn't have got this beer. Um, she saw it, and she says, oh, this you should get this one. So I got this one, and I did my research, right? Yeah. Hashtag do the research. And I found... This uh, beer, which Kevin, you're going to go crazy for, a tribe oh called my Gwen. <laughs> ah. Oh, stop it! Oh man, hazy, hazy IPA. Now, That's the best thing is, it, it on the side. If you can, if you can read, it says, "I left my beer in El Segundo," and Thank on you. the other side, it says, "We're on a hot pool." Or see, we're on a poor tour with Muhammad, my, my man, going each and every day with the mic in my hand. So good. Oh, oh, bro. oh my god i can't i need this beer right now <laughs> so are they from el segundo i never heard of these guys um it's in you've Sonoma. never heard of a tribe called quest <laughs> <laughs> it's uh in windsor california sonoma county oh okay I've never yeah heard of i thought okay. that if they were out of uh out of El Segundo, that would've been cool. But um, yeah. a tribe. No, no, that's me. hey. Regardless, that's a that's a great that's a great can right there. Yeah, salud, salud. Yeah, I, cheers, I, guys. I wouldn't have known that had I not uh, gotten this beer and did the research. So yeah, and that's that's Ed, the same. That's the same wine. brewery that you're having. Yes, Barrel Brothers. Got it. Ed from a total wino like me, I will plug Total Wine. All right. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, uh, Top Gun Tall War is like, and it braves up three nothing. So there you go. So, and my brother Adam showed up. Adam, Hello. guess who? <laughs> um, all right. So let's get to it. This is this day in baseball history for November second. November second, nineteen twenty six. The Tigers. Release Ty Cobb ending the 22 year association with the team, the Georgia Peach, as Detroit's player manager for the past six seasons, uh, compiled a 479 and 444 record. That's an over uh, 500 record. Uh, but the club never finished closer than 16 games from first place. So, uh, as much as we'd like to see a player manager, it probably took a toll on him for sure. But, you know, that's a pretty impressive uh, win loss record. And, and Ty Cobb still is baseball's greatest monster, but man, love Speaking it. Of monsters, <laughs> it looks like he is a monster in that photo. I mean, what is happening to him? It looks like something about angels in the outfield. The angel would push the guy up to catch the ball. Except yep. in this case, it might be like a demon from hell that would be possessing him. Right. Well, was, no, if it's Ty Cobb, it's a demon from hell for sure. Yes. 
I always love those old sports poses too. The like he like like he, would he ever make it? You know, would, would this be a pose that he would do like during a game now? No, like the football pose as well, like the Heisman one. No, <laughs> no. So I also wanted to make mention uh, because nobody asked. Um, uh, Ty Cobb is no relation to former American actor, martial artist, and former professional boxer Randall Tex Cobb. Uh, I've seen here in Raising Arizona. So, um, so one Arizona reference so far. So keep track. Randall Tex Cobb is one of the most underrated actors in all of film history. And, I, and I did, he's a Renaissance man. He's well educated. He was, I mean, Renaissance man. I much like Dolph Lundgren. Going back to your juiced IPA, that was a very Ivan Drago symbolism. Like <laughs> that dude, that guy, he was a monster, but he was very well spoken, very smart, great guy. Love his movies. Yeah. And uh, as I did the research, I also saw that like he, I think he was involved in something where he saved someone from like being shot in a in a robbery, and then he was he, he missed like a, a chance to like fight Muhammad Ali or something like that. I'm, I'm I, might, I might be wrong on that, but it's, it's something to that effect. And uh, you're right about educated. I think he that he uh, later in life got like um, like uh, uh, he got his uh, college education like later in life as well. So uh, yeah, he was super accomplished and he's in one a really great movie uh or a lot of great movies and tv shows um see and, but I also, and jack i thought you talked about Dolph lundgren's education because as far as i know he's actually a very well educated man as well oh no he's insanely educated like yes there's mit professors that don't have yes, his education was, yeah. he's brilliant yeah. But no yeah. text text cobb too man he was he was a very well spoken well read individual yeah, and uh, and, and this, this was a, uh, the part made for him, too. So um, Yes. But I also wanted to make mention of this. So I, as I was looking through pictures and everything, um, I also saw this. Um, this is a great picture of Babe Ruth uh, giving Ty Cobb what we used to call in grade school a Benny Hill. Um, uh, Jack, are you, are you aware of what a Benny Hill is? I'm aware of who Benny okay. Hill is. I'm okay. not aware of what a Benny Hill is. Okay, so Michael's well, lucky. I'd be ready to do it. I'm well, ready to do it right now to you, Michael. All right. Well, let, 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 let's go to the clip. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> it's Good always enough. that guy, too, Jack. It's always that old guy because he has the chrome dome on the top. You know. Right. No, it's that's what I do to my kid when I need to wake him up. Yeah. There you go. Oh, I didn't know yep. there was a name for it. I thought yeah. it was just abuse. Yeah, it's the, <laughs> it's, the, it's the Benny Hill because he he used to have that old man that he used to like slap in the head, but yeah, it looks like you. It's just abuse, like you and your son, apparently. <laughs> Allegedly, I'll throw an alleged in there. Sorry. Oh, you don't need to. It's uh, I've got a, I've got a, a mandated lawyer. reporter, so I don't want to hear any more about this. Yes. Yes. Oh, a Ty, there is there is there a Ty Cobb song by Soundgarden? I can't remember what album that's on. That's okay. If, what if album is, that on, uh, Ed? I don't, not, could it be on Bad Mother Finger? Not sure. Uh, no, no, yeah. no. I would have remembered it. I would remember that. Then there must be on an earlier record. He's going to look it up. Yeah. <laughs> th thank you, Ed. We 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 have to mix these uh, uh these pop culture references in. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, lo I love that. I love that. Taro called it a record and not an album. Like you completely oh, gosh, dated I yourself. That's the, uh, down on the upside. I don't know why I don't remember that song on there. That's the album. Uh, that's but that's their album that came out in like '96, right? Like the peak of their career. Oh wow! I, I wasn't aware of that either. So I don't know. You. I don't remember it, that song. I try to remember what was on that record, but I'm spacing out right now. Yeah. Can you Super say album? That, that record. That record, record, record. Kid. You gotta play yeah. those records, kid. Thank you, thank you, Ed. That's that's so awesome, Ed. Our our, uh, our deep dive uh, music reference, uh, our lifeline. <clears throat> November second, nineteen thirty eight. Red Sox first baseman Jimmy Fox, who hit three forty nine with fifty homers and one hundred and seventy five RBIs, uh, receiving nineteen of twenty two first place votes, becomes the first player, the first player to win the Most Valuable Player award three times. The 31-year-old slugger uh, was also the recipient of the honor in 32 and 33 playing for the Philadelphia A's. 
And if I was gonna, if I was going to make a, another uh, English reference here, I was gonna look up if he was uh, related to Samantha Fox. Um, but this is a family show, so I didn't want to. <laughs> I didn't want to show that. <laughs> well, I'll say you can't look up Red Fox. Red, you have Red, Red Fox, Fox, but that wouldn't be very family friendly either. Yes, that's actually very true too. So this one's for Ed. This one, he'll love this one. Uh, okay. November second, nineteen sixty-four. Uh -oh. Love this. The Columbia Broadcasting System, uh, CBS to you, uh, becomes the first corporate owner of a major league team by buying the eighty percent by buying eighty percent of the Yankees from Dan Topping and Dell Webb for eleven point two million dollars during the first year under CBS. The Bronx Bombers will come in sixth place. With a 77 and 85 record, finishing the se finishing second in the division for the first time in 40 years. Now we did not rehearse this, okay? Jack, who yes. is Del Webb? Del Webb? Yes. Uh, Del Webb is a uh, he's a home builder in Phoenix, Arizona. He is. <laughs> He's an American real estate developer and co wow. a former co-owner of the New York Yankees. He is known for founding, developing uh, the retirement community, Sun City, Arizona. Wow. Um, and has many works of his firm, Dell E. Webb Construction Company. De uh, Jack, you're in construction. Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, yeah. Dell Del Webb, they, they, it's not just a retirement community. They have... Out in Scottsdale, they have a big presence out there. We're moving out west. I mean, he that Dell Web Dell E Web Construction has a giant presence in Phoenix, Arizona, and also Tucson, if I'm not mistaken. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do plan communities in Tucson as well. So, Kevin, this yes, I'm not leaving, I'm not leaving you out on this one. I was like, you better not ask who this Web guy is because I have no clue. Uh -oh. He is the builder and owner of several casinos in Las Vegas and Atlantic City. He's also in the Gaming Hall of Fame, established in 18, 1989 to recognize individuals who have played a significant role in the gaming industry, entertainment industry. Okay. So there's like, you know, like, uh, you know, every Las Vegas person you could imagine, you know, the, all the all the big players. But Del Webb is in the Hall of Fame of that. Really? Yes. <laughs> Yep. Wow. So you've got Tom Jones and then Del Webb in the same Hall yeah. of Fame. You, you wow. bet. You bet. And uh, I think a bit like Benny Binion, if you've been to Binion's in oh, downtown, yeah. uh, sure. you know, the guys like that that have established themselves. Yeah. Kevin Vegas. was Del there Webb. in the Kevin was there in the Binion's heyday. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, Kevin well, used to play a game face. called. Uh, Kevin used to play a game called. Yeah, a little Farrow. sad going over there. Yeah. yeah. Kevin used to play a game Thank, called. Pharaoh. Oh yeah! Thank you for bringing that up. F A R O, and uh, yes, it, it no longer exists. So he played games that don't even yes. exist in Vegas don't, anymore. Don't try to. I'm not going to explain it. <laughs> Those rules. The, the rules are insane. When in I Kevin's can't, I can't, heyday, I have all night to explain the rules. In Kevin's heyday in Vegas, they used to bet on men fighting to the death in the street. <laughs> which now it's been regulated and it's was, the ufc but no in kevin's heyday it was like no we've got a guy named gargantuan and big joe and they're gonna fight each other in a graveyard and i got 150 bucks on it there you go i was gonna say was there even a las vegas in my heyday i don't know yeah well you've had yeah. a lot of heydays you're an yeah. immortal yeah it was just a two-horse town when when, when uh, kevin rolled in <laughs> All right, November second, nineteen seventy-two, leading the league in victories with twenty-seven, an ERA of one point nine seven, starts with forty-one, complete games with thirty, and strikeouts with three hundred and ten. Steve Carlton, who's becoming a regular here at the uh, uh, at the tail end in Q four of the Beer Baseball broadcast, uh, wins the National League Cy Young Award. Now get this. Lefty's victories, 27, account for nearly half of the last place Phillies wins, 45.8%. <laughs> Is that awesome or what? Oh my God. He, just, he looks so That's comfortable cool. with his leg pulled up like that. He just, I, I, you couldn't force my leg up that high. I can barely lift my <laughs> arm up that high. <laughs> and he just looks like a dad, like a suburban dad from a 70s TV show. 
<laughs> I'm I'm sure with some yoga and some deep breathing, you could get your leg that high. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. I got beer and cheeseburgers, <laughs> brother. I like how you said '70s dad, '70s TV show dad, because here we talked about his appearance on Married with Children before. So that's that's good, right, basically. that's right, that's right. Steve Carlton is becoming a friend of the show. He is. <laughs> Uh, November 2nd, 1974, the Braves trade for Hank Aaron. Um, he goes to the Brewers for Dave May and Roger Alexander. The moves allows the all-time career home run champ to finish his career in Milwaukee, the city uh, in which he started in the majors. And um, <clears throat> oh, I, lo I love that Ke Kevin's, Kevin's pose right now is perfect. Um, it's frozen again. <laughs> He's frozen. Um, he, why does he freeze in such an angry position? He's oh, so I, angry. I was gonna, I was gonna solo that too. That was perfect because <laughs> I'm just looking like what's happening to my screen. It just went black. I'm like, Ugh. you you had the perfect pose uh, too. It was like you were in mid drink. It was so good. <laughs> <laughs> See, you probably want, you probably thought I wasn't frozen then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let it go. Let it go. Yes. Oh yeah, Milwaukee, of course, Bob Pog. Nice. Millie Wake. So if if you uh if if you're into hairstyles, Jack, you're gonna like this guy's. I am into hairstyles. I November 2nd, 1976, San Diego left-hander Randy Jones, 22 and 14 with a 2.74 ERA, captures the National League Cy Young Award, capturing 15 of the 24 first place votes. Uh, two seasons before the 26 year old left-hander, this guy does not look 28, by the way, um, no. in this picture, <laughs> he looks quite no, a bit looks old. 19. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, two seasons before, uh, the 26 year old left-hander lost 22 games for the last place Padres. So quite a turnaround right there. Uh, it, lo and it looks like they just glued cotton balls to the side <laughs> of his head. Like he's got the princess Leia going on. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where they got the idea for Princess Leia because it's the year before. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. There you go. There you go. And I believe, I think he's still the only Padre ever to win the Cy Young Award. As far as I know, I think he still is the only guy. I think so too. You're right. Man, and what he, a cool jersey. Like visually, oh, yeah. like what a great jersey. Yeah, they've gone back to this. This is the uh, the brown and kind of mustard uh, jersey. Uh, they've gone back to this look because everybody loves it. Uh, but they keep on trying to update it and make it more kind of um, more bluish and white and kind of cream colored. Uh, but everybody nice. wants to go back to this and it, it's, it's always cool. And also if you notice on his, um, on his shoulder, uh, it's the hundred, I think it's the hundredth year of the, um, uh, the national league. So in 76. Oh, okay. Or, or it might be in baseball. So it's a certain patch. I think we've talked about this before that it was uh, yeah, it's like, yeah, 1876 is like supposedly when baseball started. It um, didn't start then. I can tell you, I was there. Come on. No, you, it wasn't. It wasn't. Come you on. you, you, you saw flyers for other 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 events. Yeah, you know. Come on, there was always there was baseball going around. They just <laughs> they, they just you know knew the, they knew whose palms of grease, and they get the first official league. You know. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, so uh, we've had uh, uh, two. We've had two Arizona references already. Um, right. And then, uh, this will be our second Philadelphia friends. Let's see how many we can get by the end of the show. November 2nd, 1983, John Denny garners 20 of the 24 first place votes, uh, for the writers, uh, for the national league Cy Young award, easily out distancing, uh, runners up Mario Soto for the reds and Jesse Orozco. I'm just not sure who Jesse Orozco was pitching for at that time. Maybe the Orioles. Um, well, no, um, because this is that this is the National League Cy Young, right? So he would be yeah, on National the League. Already. So it might have been it might have been the Mets. Yeah. Okay. Wow. All right. Uh, wow, well, John Denny. It's like what? John Denny. <laughs> exactly. Like I remember him in the seventies. He was playing for the Cardinals. But get this, Jack. You're gonna love this. The Prescott, Arizona native, third Arizona reference, uh, uh, posted a 19 and six record with a 2.37 ERA with the National League champion Phillies. From so Prescott, he yeah, he's from Prescott of all places. Huh. And I remember that when I was uh, when he was on the Cardinals, I remember seeing him from being from Prescott, Arizona. 
That's so, wild. Prescott's a great town. It's a you you wouldn't want to live there, but it's great to visit. Like a nice little weekend town. And uh, th- it's it's a place that my girlfriend and I think that we may move one day. Yeah, no, it, <laughs> so we don't want to live there, right? <laughs> no, let me rephrase. If you want to have a like a happy, quiet, easy life, move to Prescott. Off the grid. If you're if you're cowboy Jack Durango and you like bright lights and gunshots and <laughs> bar fights and crazy women and lots of booze don't move to prescott yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's 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 a slow it's for a slower moving crowd like like sun city like we were talking about before right right and i'd love to live in sun city but you have to be 55 to live there you have to show proof of your God. age to live there which is why, ridiculous why did like i move it, there it, why did I move there 75 years ago? Why didn't you move there 175 years ago? I don't know. I wish you lived there. You'd be super close to me. We could go to Whataburger. <laughs> yes, I'm moving immediately after the show. I'm packing up and ready to go. No, yeah. I, it's beautiful, man. Like I, My buddy and I just got a cabin up there, ah, gosh, a couple, maybe, oh, maybe six months ago. And it's just beautiful forest. I mean, lovely, lovely place up there. You should move there. I'd awesome. come and visit you every weekend. Oh, love it. Love it. November 2nd, 2000, after a 15-year big league career, first baseman Will Clark announces his retirement. The thrill, Will the Thrill, ends his playing days with the maguire Cardinals supplying the Redbirds with a much-needed need, much offense. He hit 345 with 12 homers and 42 RBIs in a two-month span after being traded from Baltimore I do remember this period, like Will Clark, like had a renaissance um, and he basically, if it wasn't, I think it, like Rick and Keel was like throwing him over the backstop at that time. Uh, so they did actually, and I think they had like Gary Gaetti from the twins uh, uh, at third base as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but a, a lot, a lot of people don't remember that he was a Cardinal right at the very end. Will the thrill. I had no team. idea. I was like, that's Will Clark. Yes. Yeah, look at that jawline. Oh, thrill. <laughs> I have a I have a great story about um, Will uh, Will Clark. When I was in high school uh, playing baseball, we used to um, we used to have like they weren't ma- major league players yet. Like for instance, like Kurt Schilling got drafted, but he would come back and kind of work out with us and stuff like that. Tom Pagnazzi, who played for the Cardinals as well, he was the brother in law of a, of a one of one of my uh, teammates. So he used to come and work out with us as well. But there's this guy named Steve Sparks, and he was like, um, I, I'll say a career minor leaguer. And but he used to come and 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 work out with us as well. And I remember one story that he told about Will Clark is that he was at a camp with uh for the for the Giants, for the San Francisco Giants, and Will Clark was at first base. So there was like maybe 10 first basemen that they were working out. And he went up to Will Clark and he, he went to go shake his hand and Will Clark kind of kayfabed him, like did like walk Ooh. right past him. And, uh, and this, you know, this guy's a young guy. He doesn't, he hasn't been in baseball long. And he kind of like, well, what's this guy's deal? Whatever. And uh, like later on, he went up to Will Clark and, and said, and Will Clark wasn't Will Clark at the time. He was like an up and comer. Right. Sure. And he, and uh, he, he said to him, he goes, Hey man, I like, I went up to shake your hand and like, you like, didn't shake my hand like what's what's the deal like you know just to be nice to you he goes he goes are you playing first base he goes yeah he goes well, i play for first base he goes you want my job what do i care about you Ooh, <laughs> i like it i like it will uh, the thrill i like it will wow. the thrill yeah so so i thought that was an awesome that story. Made me that was a fan fun. right there brother that made me a fan <laughs> so Michael, you weren't yeah. there when he was on the Firebirds, right? Or did he even play on the Firebirds? That's a good question. I'm not sure if he did or didn't. It might have been. The, it might have been the Phoenix Giants. I don't think he even like. I don't think he even played in the minors, if I'm not mistaken. But you might want to check oh, that okay. out. Yeah, because I mean, he he came up really quick. Yeah, he did. He came up in he like he got fast track six or eighty seven. Yeah, I have to do the research. He might. Oh, yeah. oh. Talk amongst yourselves. Right? He might have played look. in the early 80s. Uh, I, I'm, I'm remembering well, like a card now, maybe. Well, yeah. his rookie card is 87 clear. I remember because that's when I was collecting cards the most, you know. Yeah, he was total competitor. That, and, and that story tells you as much. 
Yeah, I actually, I actually told um, the Schilling sh- story. Yeah, I did actually. Yes. And- yeah, I, I mentioned it in there. He actually debuted in '86, so I think he actually might have went straight to the. I don't even know if he played the minor leagues. He was on the '84 Olympic team too. There you go. So yeah, so he was. He's he on was there. Faster. So I wanted to throw that story in there because that was always a great story yeah. that I never got to tell. To tell. All right, so uh, our this will be our third Phillies reference. So you know, three three tie. Uh, at November second, two thousand and nine, at Citizens Bank Park, Chase Utley ties Reggie Jackson's nineteen seventy seven record with his fifth home run in the World Series, going deep twice in the Phillies' eight to six victory over the Yankees in Game Five. Now, this was really surprising to me, Kevin. The yeah. Philadelphia second baseman becomes the second player to have two multi-homer games in the fall classic, joining the Royals uh, outfielder, Willie Akins. Willie Mays Akins. Willie Mays Akins, who accomplished. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Like 1980 World Series. And then uh, against the Phillies. And then he, and then, you know, he, um, he, you know, his favorite song was white lines. I'll just say that. <laughs> well done. Well done. He well, got in a little bit of trouble. But, pure yeah. as driven snow. Yeah, exactly. Hey, man, I think he actually seriously got lot like yeah. he actually really had pretty bad drug issues. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately for him. Nicely done, Kevin. No, I'm, I'm, yeah, let's let's laugh at it. Yeah, <laughs> he's still alive. Though. <laughs> Probably still alive. So, so this is Chase Utley right here. Chase Utley, oh, and, and, or or the sign that we saw one time at a Dodgers game when he was playing for the Dodgers, Chase Butley. Ooh, yeah, yeah, that's a that's not, not a favorite. Not a favorite. <laughs> I'm, I'm cool, not I'm cool a favorite. with Chase Butley. I don't like the look of him right away. When he's playing for I the just... Dodgers, he actually broke a guy's leg with a slide, and they actually changed like the slide rule. Really? Uh, in second base. Yeah. yeah it was you think he intentionally yeah. tried to hurt him? Um, uh, it was one of those like kind of competitive plays. Um, if the guy wouldn't have broke his leg, you could make a case that it was in the spirit of, uh, you know, tough being tough. Why are you trying tough? to defend him? Don't defend him. This guy, I mean, this guy does have like, I, I don't remember. I know he's had more than one thing. You know, he's kind of a dirty player. You know, he looks like a scumbag. I'll just say that he looks <laughs> like a scumbag. Definitely not a favorite of mine. Chase Utley, if you're listening, you're a scumbag. <laughs> I'll wow. find you in the streets. But no, he he doesn't look like a nice guy. He He's one of those guys who's like, uh, he, he reminds me of like a salesman. Like he's like, um, well, hold on, hold on. It, it, he's more like uh, kind of a um, like a like a like a used car salesman. Like he's Got like it. like uh, tell you why you need to do this, and no one you don't need to do it at all, right? And, sure. Uh, yeah. No. He's and got you'll hate eyes. him. You'll hate him for this reason too. When it when it when, you know when they have like players weekend when they actually put the name like the players nicknames on the back. Do you know what his nickname is? Not Butley. The Silver Fox. Ooh, I, you know what? Now hold on, I might be changing my opinion. I kind of like that a little bit. <laughs> Did I bring you back in? <laughs> you, you might have turned me on my hatred for Chase Butley. <laughs> well, yeah, it, 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 once we know he likes it, we'll call him Utley and not Butley. Yeah, that was it. Dodgers. Yeah, he broke. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, forget the shortstop. Yeah, to ha- to Hada. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 then who did who did the Cardinals sign uh, a year after that? Tejada, and then then cut him like right away. He he was never the same after that. Getting his leg broken. Hmm. All right, Mark. Uh, Mark's here. Nice. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It, it was it was a brutal play. We it definitely it's one that you didn't you don't want to watch. Uh, but thank you to Mark and Caitlin for uh, checking in. I'm gonna have to look um, at that. Play and and I'm, I'm gonna have for those who want to know, five nothing. Uh, uh, Braves. So. Um, there you go. So back this to could, it. This could be the last night of the World Series, huh? It could be. Yeah. It could be. And uh, well, John Paul will be there. Yeah. Well, he's over there spending his time on that Outlaw Mud Show, the World Series. Everybody here, this is the main <laughs> event, Beer main Baseball events. Blog. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. And lastly, um, November 2nd, uh, 2016, uh, just it seems like – doesn't seem like five years ago, but it is. Wow. After a hundred year, a hundred and eight year drought, the Cubs capture the World Series, needing 10 innings in game seven to defeat the Indians at Progressive Field eight to seven. Cleveland, who had a three to one game advantage. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot about that. Yep. 
in the World Series, now owns the longest span between World Series championships with their last title having come in 1948. Now, I, I'm a lifelong Cardinal fan. I thought this was awesome for baseball, for the Cubs to actually come up and actually do as well as oh, they yeah. did. I was actually very happy for them at this time. So, um, And they totally deserved it. Uh, actually, the Indians like came back in that game too. That was, And I was telling John, John Talwar, who's at the World Series right now, um, whenever there's a rain delay or a, a game missed because of rain, it always screws up one team uh, massively. And um, there was a rain delay in this game. And right when, I think it was Rajay Davis who hit the home run to tie it up, then there was a rain delay, and then when they came back, the the Cubs just like dominated right after that, and they uh, lost their the momentum. Yeah. So now, yep. just my limited baseball, the 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 curse of the Cubs was brought on. Was it a goat or a cat? Okay, so you're right, kind of on 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 two accounts. Oh, so the initial curse of of the Cubs was one in the, I think it was in the twenties or maybe thirties, but um, somewhere in that area where a guy was actually bringing a goat into Wrigley field and was not allowed to bring it in. It became like the curse of the goat. He's, he, it was, he was like, I think a prominent bar owner at the time. So I think it was a bit of a publicity stunt, um, but it was the curse of, of the goat. Okay. But in 1969, that cat ran in, in Shea Stadium and spooked, supposedly spooked the Cubs. Hey. And then they went on the slide and then the Mets came in and, and uh, took the World Series and the National League at that time. Does that make sense? No, it, it absolutely does make sense. All right. So, you know, as much as, to, a, in a my curse, head, was, as much as the curse can make sense. Yes. You know. Well, no, I mean, it's baseball, right? Like baseball is a very superstitious game. Right. Yeah. No. There's there, uh, yeah. what did uh, what was from Major League jo Jobu? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Hey, yeah. That, was a, that was his religion, sir. That's not like a superstition. <laughs> Come on. It isn't religion just superstition, brother? Come on now. <laughs> I've got it. I've I've got a Jobu shrine in my closet. I nice. joke. I nice. yeah. I yeah. no. I I kill chickens every morning. Sacrifice to Jobu. It's good. It's good stuff. Plus dinner for the kids. Right, good. Boom. Chicken. There you go. Boom. Hey. Boom. And 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 chicken uh, was what Wade Boggs used to eat uh, before every baseball game. It all comes around. Thank you for joining us for this day in baseball history. We appreciate it so much. Let's get to baseball card sharks. Here is the baseball card shark standings. Uh, I am eight and nine. Kevin six and eleven. Cowboy Jack still with a goose egg. My goodness. Ah, uh, hold on. I'm going to petition the beer baseball league for one win because I there was one night at like four a.m. <laughs> when the three of us played and I destroyed it. It was non-sanctioned. That was a non-sanctioned. Yeah, that was a non That was non-sanctioned. Yes. Okay, got it. But yeah, but then again, it was only Jack who went, not all three of us. Oh, that's true. That's true. Okay, Kevin, we're not Jack, talking we about Jack, the details. We we're just that. talking about I won. That's <laughs> against yourself. That's good. <clears throat> all right, Ooh. so here's the baseball card shark rules. We're going to draw 11 cards. Uh, we're going to put uh, eight on the, on the board. We're going to put three on the bench. Then we work uh, our way from the bottom. It's a high-low game. We need to figure out what we need to do. We have position players. It's the 1991 uh, set that we had from last week. So let me um, do this. I'm actually going to add this to the stream. I'm going to take this one away. And, uh, oh, yeah. All right, so we have 1991. So let's... What do we got here? We got uh, we can do games, at bats, runs, uh, hits, doubles, triples, home runs, RBIs, stolen bases, slugging percentage, uh, base on balls, doubles. doubles. You want to do doubles? I want to do doubles. Okay, right. doubles and um, right. uh, no, he's ordering a drink. What, well, uh, Jack? What do you want? Were you ordering doubles. a drink just then, right? Oh no, the cards? Yeah, we yes. can do doubles there too. Sure. Oh, okay. I thought he was ordering a double, a double drink. <laughs> I, I was. I was. I, I, I know. Bring me a double. Yeah. 
No. Fill it <laughs> All right. Up. Here we go. Going to cut the cut the cards. And uh, here, the first one we're starting with is uh, oh, who's going first? By the way, Big Taro always goes first. The All best right. chest in the West. <laughs> you start out with your you oh, eight before beauty. Player. I see what it is. No, 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 no. You you start out with who's going to keep the crowd hot. I'm the mid Carter. Well, Michael is the main event. Michael, Michael's in first place. Regardless, we got Ozzy Gian. All right. Okay. Ozzy Gian, so who won a uh, world championship in 2005 as a manager. We talked about that last week. Get your beers ready, Daryl Hamilton from the Brew Crew. We talked about him. He had, uh, what, seven hundred over 700 uh, at-bats. This is Willie Wilson. Just putting it, it out there. He's fun. putting the vibe out. You got Ryan Sandberg uh, on a, uh, oh, yeah, horizontal card right there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Junior Felix on the uh, on the Blue Jays. Boy, look, he looks like he looks so small right there. He looks like a little kid. I was like, what is <laughs> happening? There? Oh my gosh, he looks like a mini. Uh, very underrated player, Matt Williams for the Giants. Oh, an old friend of yours, right? Um. Was I there during that time? I'll have to look at the back. I, th I, th I thought you I told me he was on the team when you were the bat boy for the Firebirds. I, th I seem to think that he was. Um, but I, again, I, I, I'm trying to think because it, it might have been when I was going to the games and I wasn't the bat oh, boy. Okay. So, so okay. I can't remember which. So we'll we'll look on the That's back. Uh, Isn't he married to someone like a television? Someone who's on TV shows or something too? No, I I, I know who you're uh, thinking of, but it's, it's it's not it. I don't think. All right. Well, there's there's Gerald Ger Gerald, Gerald Young. Young. I'll say Gerard Gerald, not Gil. Oh, here we go. Pete and Cavilia. All right. And that is that is the last card. And then All on right. your, on your bench, Pat Tabler. Pat Tabler. Yeah. Pat Tabler. Solid. A, that, solid. He's a mechanic. Luis Polonia. All right. There you go. There's an angel for you. Oh, yeah. And look at this. Ended out with Tony Gwynn. Nice. All right. Nice. You got some good stuff here. Well, you know, you got a good guy on the bench there. And we're doing doubles, right? Definitely. So the Ozzy Gann, let's look at it. The doubles, he has 119 doubles. Wow. All right. That's that like a solid number. One, I was gonna guess. I was gonna guess 120. So, right in there. <laughs> okay. He he, he uh, no he didn't go. Matt Williams was with Kim Cattrall. Are you serious? That I, I would I, that'd be amazing if that's true. I don't know. I, we're just making it as we go here. So does Daryl Hamilton Hamilton have higher or lower than 119? Oh, it's gotta be lower. I, I would okay. think. I think it's lower. Okay. I should say it has to be. I'm pretty sure it is. You would be right, sir, with nine. Nine? Oh, okay. <laughs> like, you took solid. a second to read. I'm like, there's no way, right? <laughs> Dude, that's a solid leadoff. I agree. So, Willie Wilson, higher or lower than nine? Whew. Oh, man. That's got to be higher. <laughs> I, would, I would definitely agree on that one. Uh, 241. Look, wow. look at how, look at how many years. Oh he's yeah! Wow. Oh yeah! He's a season vet. It's like it's almost like two point type right there. Yep. <laughs> All right. So uh, two forty one. This is going to be a tough one. Ryan Sandberg. Oh, that's true. This is going to be this. This is this is tough. Two hundred forty one. Yep. And this is what year is this card? Ninety one. Ninety one. Ooh, jeez. Oh my goodness. I gotta think about this. Hmm. Give me that number again, the Willie Wilson. It was two what? Two four one. Two four one. I'm doing math in my head. I'm like, this is a very tough one. It's gonna be close. I'm gonna go. I'll I'll go higher. I think it's maybe like 275. This, this okay. is gonna be close, though. Let's do it. I don't know. It's gonna be close. Two fifty six. Wow! <laughs> Super close. I had to. I had to check my math. Wow. About eight years. That is thirty that is, a year for two forty. I'm like, oh, I think that's doable. By yeah, the that's, that's exactly teeth. it. You nailed it. He didn't have less than twenty three. 
Yeah. Yeah. So nicely done. He was never really a big power hitter. I'm like, well, he might get a lot of doubles at Wrigley, you know? Yep. Uh, so, so 256, close. nice call. Junior Felix. <laughs> Little Junior Felix. Little Junior Felix. Oh, God, I'm, I'm just kidding. It's, it's, it, I was trying to think of it. Is it doesn't even have 10% of that. It's yeah. lower. Okay. It's lower. Okay. Actually, more than I thought. 37. All right. <laughs> 37. <laughs> That that poor kid looks like a fifteen year old. He does. It's like the his helmet is swallowing him. He's from the Dominican Republic. He was. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, it says he's five eleven. I don't believe that. It says he's no. one sixty five. I don't believe that either. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, brother, brother is five six one oh eight. Yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, our number is 37. Does right. Matt Williams have more or less? I'm going to divert really quick because I'm going to tell you that he was married to an actress named Michelle Johnson, who I don't know. I guess she was in Blame It on Rio and in Gung Ho, for those of you Oh, my Gung goodness. Ho. But then uh, this is – yeah, there you go. Um, but, but then this is more – this is our Arizona going back to this. In 2003, he became engaged to a Phoenix News anchor named Erica Monroe – who is the TV news anchor from KTVK uh, down channel on channel three. that is, you know, what channel that is Jack? Channel three. I think it, maybe the local Fox affiliate. I don't know. All right. I thought that was kind of funny. Like, all right, so there you go. Wow. Anyway, okay. um, what was that number you... again? 30 what? Uh, 37. It'll be slightly 30. higher. I think he's been playing about four years at this point. It's going to be close though. It's going to be closer than I think. So you say higher. I'll say it's a little higher. Okay. 60. Woo! Jeez. Nicely done. All right. Well, this is the end. This is the end of my peak of my baseball knowledge. So yeah. I, I was hoping I would do all right here. All right. Yeah. So they it, it doesn't say anything about his minor league uh, career here. Um, but it, it does say it he lives in Everett. Scottsdale. It says the air pro ball at Everett. Yep. And, and uh, it, promoted to Clinton. Where? Oh, Clinton. Yeah, there you go. Okay, all right, so well, 60, 60, and uh, gotta go gotta go lower. I gotta go lower for Gerald. For Gerald. Okay, lower. He's like a youngster. 60. He's played a few years, but he's a youngster. Ooh, fifty-one. Wow. I was Ooh, gonna say geez. this. This is this was gonna be tough for me. I was gonna say that he was actually pretty comparable to Matt Williams at that time. In this time period, not, not overall later in their career, but ooh, that was yeah. close. And he's from Santa Ana. All right, too. then. Uh, oh, right on. There you go. Santa Ana Valley High. All right. Oh, okay. So the number is fifty-one. This is a this is a tough one to end it yeah. up. Pete Incavili. This is very tough. Yeah, because he's definitely a home run hitter. So that'd be easy for him to get that. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll I'll go higher, though it's gonna be really close. I might I might miss one, but I'm, I'm gonna hopefully he has 60. Although God, can he get to second base? Ugh. Exactly. I don't know if I'm gonna get this one. I already said higher, so I'll stick to it. Let's do it. I want. I might regret this one now. Higher. Well, Kevin, you ran the gauntlet 120. Oh my gosh! Wow, wow. I really had that many doubles. 120 right. in uh, wow. five years. Yeah, five I years. I just don't mean a power hitter. I just figured you had a home run or he struck out. You know. Nicely done. Didn't use any of your bench. Ah, damn it. <laughs> Darn it. But why'd you have me go first? Well, because I, I like to have you go first so that I know what I'm up against. <laughs> All it's right. okay. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to just pull into my deep baseball knowledge. Remember you get you uh bubble pugs uh, in there. So you can use your lifelines. Yeah, no, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to count on bubble pug big time. That okay. was a tough board. That, that was, was that was very so good luck. All right. Uh, up first, uh, catcher Terry Steinbach. Yeah. Yeah. Checking checking out the uh, the eclipse right there. Good. Kevin Mc <laughs> Kevin McReynolds. That's oh, a great the chicken man himself, Wade Boggs. That's a great Ooh, picture. Oh yes. Love that picture. Solid. Solid. I, I little known fact. I have what I like, what I like to refer to as a Wade Boggs monster inside of me. Because <laughs> the minute I crack open a beer, I really just want to 
beat his 174 beer record. <laughs> so I Alleged. go for that every Alleged. day. Yeah. Alleged. <laughs> Alleged. How dare you? Tony Fernandez? Well, did you count the cans? No, but it's Wade Boggs, dude. He doesn't lie, bro. Come on. Kevin Big Mouth Bass? Ooh, Kevin right. Small Mouth Bass. I like <laughs> it. Billy Hatcher? Billy Hatcher was a power hitter. Well, this is, this is, that's a, that's yeah, Pat cool. Borders. So uh, like Tony Fernandez and Pat Borders were on those uh, 92 and 93 uh, Blue Jay World Championships yep. team. Also, the crime dog, Fred McGriff. Oof, get it. The young crime dog. Yeah. The young and Right, right there you go. All right. Yeah, so that's the board. Okay, so doubles. Let's go for it. So I'm calling my shot, first of all. I'm running the gauntlet. No. Oh. Yeah, running the gauntlet. Love it. Okay. Right. So Terry Steinbach it has a grand total of seven so far in this one. So this is oh probably gosh. a pretty easy start. Uh, Kevin McReynolds, higher or lower than seven? Man, I think it might be lower, but I'm going to take a chance and go higher. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I think he had seven in a, in a week. Yeah, so he, he was a, a player of the 80s. Uh, so 194. Yeah, I think you're pretty <sighs> safe on that one. Woo! All yeah. right. That close. Um, this might be a little, I don't know. I mean. This might be tough, dogs, though. No. It, it, this is going to be closer higher. than you think. This is going to be closer no, than, closer than, than you agree. think. No, it's not. Are we talking beers or are we talking doubles? <laughs> well, both. He's higher on both. Weight bogs, don't let me down. You, you'll have more. I'm just saying it's going to be closer than you think. That's all. Yeah. So 194 is the number to beat. If he has lower, I'm going to punch a hole in my wall. Holy cow. 358. Ooh, I told you, wow, he destroyed. I was thinking 300 or so, but wow, 358. Whoa. That's insane. That is insane. Okay, 358. Uh, Lil Tony Fernandez, does he have more or less than 358? Dude, based on the glasses alone, somebody should not have let him leave the house with those sunglasses on. Way lower. Way lower. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kevin, where 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 is Tony Fernandez? Uh, where is his picture taken? Oh, that's in Anaheim, California, sir. That's very good. <laughs> All right, I from the, that that green that wall that ugly green wall and the ugly orange seeds. Is that Anaheim, California, home of the Rough Riders? <laughs> Is that what they are? <laughs> that was the stadium where the uh, the Los Angeles Rams used to play. Yeah, exactly. Before they moved to St. Louis, where Bo Jackson hit a home run. I and, don't know uh, who Bo Jackson. Oh, baseball. Yeah, yeah, that too. Yeah. Okay, so uh, the, the 358 is the number to beat. Actually, Tony Fernandez, very respectable, 192. Wow. Yeah, yeah he's a good yeah, hitter. So he, he's, he's a great hitter. hitter. Yeah. During this That's time. That's why I'm going to closer than you think. <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, this is, Now, this will be very interesting. So the number to beat is 192. 192. No. Big um, Kevin Bass. Oof. Kevin Big Mouth Bass. All right. So what year is this? This is what, 1991? Yes. Yes, sir. 1991. All right. Tony... Fernandez, and then we got Kevin Big Mouth Bass, and 192 is the number to beat, yeah? Yep. Oh, man, this is – now, see, this is where I'm going to – this is the make or break it time. I'm going to go – I'm going to go Kevin Kevin Bass, 190, 195 plus, like Kevin Bass, higher. Wow, okay. Man, Noah's helping you in the chat. I was hoping you get some help in the chat, and yeah. I'm like – I agree. I I think you're right. I don't know for sure, but I think you're right. It's not going to be much higher, though. Can you repeat that? I think you're right, sir. Thank you. That's all that matters. Yeah. There you go. Mo bucks it higher. And yeah, you have those. I'm like, you need some help in the chat. I'm like, I think you're right, but yeah. you can both be wrong. All right. So let's do it. Higher than one ninety-two. Ba 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 one seventy. Mm -hmm. I am so tired of this rigged game. It's fine. <laughs> I'm still going to play. Taro, Kevin, you you played me. You played me. That's I would have lost, too. I would have lost, too. 
That's probably the farthest I've gotten, though. So I'm proud of myself. I'm getting there. No, you yeah, had the you, board before. You did great. You you, you had the well, board? Because yeah. we had the week where all three of us ran the board. Sure. Yep. You remember and, and, that, obviously. So, so you you made the same mistake I did. I listened to Kevin, too, and I blew it in the uh, last round. So that is a... Um, yeah. <laughs> so spiked. all all the fans of the beer baseball blog, let me just give you the best piece of advice that I could ever give anybody. Never listen to Kevin Lyon. <laughs> oh, damn. No, Good it's not know. because you it's not because you give bad advice. It's because you torpedo other people because you want to win. You play mind games. I, I thought that was right. <laughs> okay. Whatever. No, because if you would have said go lower, I would have went lower. I know, but you I, did, I didn't think it was lower. No, hey, I thought you, I had you under it. Hey, baby, I'll get you next week. Don't worry. All right, whatever. I'm coming for you. Here's a cool car. I think I, this uh, might be that a might be a rookie. Yeah, yeah, Larry Walker, uh, Hall of Famer. Yeah, I that's pretty early. That that, that, might be a rookie, yeah. that wait, look at this. That guy's a Hall of Famer, Larry Walker. This next player, Larry Walker, looks, yes, sir. This next player, uh, Kevin hit his wife uh, with a bat in the head at a card show. Friend of the show, Fred Lynn on the Fred Padres. Lynn, that's right. Yes, on the Padres. Of I, I don't even remember him being on the Padres. It's amazing. Uh, so good. I, I forgot about that too. And that uh, was in San Diego where I met him at that card show. So there you go. Yeah, uh, actually, might have been, this might have been when it happened. Was potentially, uh, Jim Layritz. Sorry for Ed there. Uh, not uh, Bobby Thompson. Definitely but, not for uh, Top Gun Tawar. Yes, not Bobby Thompson for the Giants. It's Robbie Thompson. <laughs> Robbie Thompson. There you go. All right, and uh, last, uh, Tom Brookins. Look at that. Look at that guy. <laughs> what? Look at that stash. I mean, that looks like he's someone in the major league. There's so, no yes. way that's a player. That's an actor from major league. That is hundred percent. I think that's Avery Schreiber. If you know who that is, <laughs> that's a, that's a deep cut for if anybody even knows who Avery Schreiber is, uh, forget it. Uh, it's not even worth talking about. Um, no, he is, but after we're off the, after off the, yeah, we, we, we should, we'll talk about it in the hoppy hour. That's for sure. Okay. So I, I don't know about that. We'll see. <laughs> uh, so Larry Walker, let's see how many doubles he has. This is probably very, it's very early in his career. Yes, sir. Um, but he has 18, huh. 18. So uh, yeah, look at that. All those he actually played in uh, 89 and then an expos in 90. So there you go. Uh, yeah. He only played in 20 games in, in his a rookie season. Um so Fred Lynn, <laughs> well, a seasoned veteran here, definitely more than 19. Uh, I'm sorry, 18. Oh, my gosh. It, you can't even see. It's yeah, like one point that. type. Oh, my God. Wow. Um, definitely higher, uh, 388. Yeah. Wow. 388. Okay. Well, that, I mean, that's good. He had to he had to make all that money to to pay off his wife's medical bills after <laughs> Kevin hit her in the head with a <laughs> literal baseball bat. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's dangerous. It's dangerous going to car shows, you know. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> no. Hey, let's go look at some cards and get swung on with a baseball bat by a guy named Kevin Lyon wearing a Lucha oh, Libre mask. Exactly. So Jim Layritz definitely has lower. So I'm going to go there. He has 13. 13. Uh, young guy here at this point. 13. Uh. Robbie Thompson, I think, is established that by this point. Um, I definitely don't want to go to my bench because Kevin's gone through. So I'm gonna go. Oh boy, this is actually actually this might be. <laughs> I know he, he's trying to influence me. I'm like, yeah. let let let. Disco, yeah, I can't say help. it now because I'm like I know what I would say. Disco, let me help. Right in the chat, so he doesn't read it. He goes by the name Robbie. Okay, we're not looking at a prime athlete here. Lower. Oh boy, this is tough. All right. What's that so number again? 18? Because you have no baseball knowledge and I have a ton, I'm going to uh, fly a solo on this mission. Um, 
He actually has to, I, I I said before, I'm not sure if you caught it, not Bobby Thompson for the Giants, who hit a very uh, key home run for the Giants. Yeah. Um, this is Robbie Thompson, obviously not the same. 70 uh, years ago. Player. Yep. So uh, I'm going to go higher. But that's only because, yeah, and uh, Ian's with me on this one. And I'm just going to go for it because um, I'm going with my instincts. Oh, and I, oh my gosh, he has 125. So he, I, I was actually sweating this one a little bit, but um, there you go. So if I would have listened to Cowboy Jack, I would have been, <laughs> I would have given I was like this to Mike. That's how I helped you. I was like, like uh, it's higher. But I take to my get choice and do the opposite. I'm like, that was. All right. So this extra from Major League. Oh, does... so it's just like listening to me. <laughs> so Tom Brookins does not have, uh, 125 that's for darn sure because he's I, bunting in this picture so he's not going to be photoshopped that bad into his hands he doesn't even look like do you do you, do you think he has 125 hits i that that would be uh yeah i'm not i'm not Ooh. sure he's playing in 125 games brother was taking a brisket out of a grill and they photoshopped a bat into his hands like no Oh, uh, Lex, Lex, Lexi actually says higher, which which uh, higher than 125. Hey, Nathan, is like... Nathan, Nathan, no, I think she's talking about Robbie Lex. Thompson. Oh, right. She's okay. talking about Robbie Thompson here. Okay. I hope. I see, if I see another higher from Bubble Bug, what's going on? Yeah, here? I mean, everybody's Does saying higher. Yeah, I don't know about so, this one. <laughs> I don't remember him being a. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. <laughs> I, I don't think I don't remember him being a uh, a big doubles hitter, but again, bunting in the picture does not encourage me to say that he's a uh, uh, he's hitting for uh, for doubles. So um, <laughs> so I'm I'm definitely going to go lower. Um, yeah, it looks like he's uh, someone's going to steal the bat from him. That's for sure. <laughs> like don't, don't take my bat. All right, so I'm going to go lower. Oh my god, I blew it. One seventy five. Are you serious? What? Wow. What? He played for the Tigers oh for like. Ha, ha, wait a minute. Okay, hold wow. on. Wow. He played with the Tigers since '79. How do we not hear about this guy? How did you not hear about this guy? He played Lexi for a whole Lex decade. And Bubble Gosh, Bug. Wow. Sorry, Got Sorry Bubble Bug. Jeez. Yeah, Mr. Soup said lower too. Ah. Uh -uh. yeah, <laughs> Bubble Pug, you're a golden god. Well done, <laughs> There you go. You're a gold bug. You you won. She actually got the win, I think. Tom Brookins. Oh my god. Well, there you go. So you learn something new every day when it comes to the beer baseball broadcast. Uh wow. we didn't get to our we didn't get to our top. Let's see uh Tony Gwynn on our bench. Uh 221 at this point. Yeah. Actually lower than I expected. Yeah, even lower than um, Wade Boggs. I thought they would be pretty close. Um, actually, Pat Tabler, <laughs> pretty close with 180. Wow. I wouldn't have expected yeah, he was that a either. Forever, he was a pretty season bet. Yeah, Luis Polonia with uh, 51. Wow, that was fun, Kevin. <clears throat> back, back again. Nicely done. Something we didn't get to either. Billy, um, if that Ian mentioned is the Billy Hatcher card. He had a donut on his bat. And we didn't even get to get to that car. Oh, right on. I didn't that see that like, oh. Yeah, nicely done. <clears throat> no, no. Yeah, he, he brought it up me, again. Like, oh, we didn't get to see it. Let me let me ask you, Ian. Have you ever heard of that? A donut on a bat? Is it was that? Is that even like a term anymore? Do they even use donuts? I think that they probably have like, like they in in the old days they used to like like grab like four or five bats. And then I remember that there there was um, it was controversial at the time. Someone had uh, put like a metal uh, pole into uh, some cement. So they had it in the on deck circle to get loose. So that was controversial at the time. But like the, the donuts, I'm, I'm interested to know if that's even a term anymore. So it uh, has to be right. I mean, the guys aren't swinging around three or four bats like they used well, to back in the 70s. I mean, in the in the in the 80s and uh, 90s, th it actually looked like a donut. So it actually slipped on the bat, but you don't see that much anymore because now it's like this, almost like this metal pipe thing that they put on there. It's like, it's like this clamp that they put on that's, that's bigger. 
Yeah, oh, so you yeah, can't so get like the, the you can't get the cool visual of like warming up, swinging with the donut, and then hitting the bat on the ground, and the donut yeah. drops. Yeah, like, yeah, there you go. That's exactly. a cinematic like. That's a cinematic moment in baseball, man. That's what yeah. we need. There you go. So it's 15 years ago, but yeah, but yeah, it's probably, you know, it, for a cost, they're probably like hand these down, but it's like, now they're like these pipes that kind of clamp on the bats now that you can use. So Terrible. Um, millennials ruin baseball. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's get to baseball trivia. Let's test your knowledge of a baseball, uh, 100 years of baseball. I put into this. So uh, I'm searching, you know, many, many years. So let's, let's go for it. Let's do it. Who is the all-time leader in wins for the Detroit Tigers? Here are your four choices. Kevin, I'd love to look on your face. <laughs> like, um, I don't think of one, maybe one person. I don't know. Jack Morris, Hooks Douse, Mickey Lowich, or George Mullen? Wow. Yeah. There's I've some- only heard of two of these guys. At least one of them was the name I thought of. Which makes it pretty obvious who you know I'm thinking of. Wow, so, Mr. Soup used rebar. Is is that the one that clamps on, or the 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 bigger one that that? Yeah, so it's it's probably the higher end one. Hmm. Wow, this and is, this is the Detroit Tigers. Yes, Detroit sir. Tigers, yeah. A long history of baseball. They've been around. They're one of the first teams. Remember, Ty Cobb played yep. uh, on the Tigers. Yep. Hooks <laughs> Dallas. I never heard of that guy. I love it. You've never heard of Captain Hooks Douse? No. I'm locking it in. Number two, Captain Hooks Douse. There you go. <laughs> Bubble Pug. Wow, you guys are like that. No, I stole, their, I stole their answer. It's uh, Nikki going I mean, with I, Nikki Lowledge. That's a great guess. Wow. That is. I, that, I, that's what I'm – Ed going with Nikki Lowledge. That or Jack well. Morris. So I don't think Jack Moore is the only name I can come up with, but he didn't. He also played at the Twins for several years. That's so. it. That's yeah, that's a good call. That's why I think I'm going to go with uh, Mickey Lolich as well. <sighs> Rookie. <laughs> oh, it's interesting. It's it's a part, piece of bar that they use for a building. Yeah, rebar. Yeah. Well, yeah. Rebar. When he said rebar, I was it, yeah. Yeah. So you it, it, again is that's what they used to have. They used to have like the thing of like rebar, but they had concrete on it. But then mm. now they just use rebar for. They just put it down and you just kind of like warm up. Uh. Yep. Is it Mr. Soup? Is it a number five, a number three, a number two? What's the number of the rebar? <laughs> uh, right. I, I, yeah. You, you, you put it in concrete foundations to strengthen the foundations. Yes. Mm-hmm. A number five rebar is one half inch diameter. What, what, what's the, uh, what's the, uh, the, uh, weight per, per, uh, square inch? Oh, no. dude, I, I, have, <laughs> Sorry, I, I have a spreadsheet for that, dude. I'm, t- I don't even know my kids middle names. <laughs> like, it's like, oh, it's your birthday. Cool. Like, come on. I can't remember rebar. <laughs> cool kid. <laughs> All right. So, um, Kevin going with Mickey Lolich, um, most of the chat going with Mickey Lolich, uh, Bubble Pug, and uh, Captain Jack. Uh, Captain, 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 Captain Jack Durango. Uh, <laughs> Captain Jack. That's right. Captain Jack. There you go. Good job. Yeah. Uh, with that one. Ja- uh, Ian's going with uh, Jack Morris. Ooh, wow. we're having a, a we're having a a husband and a wife disagreement on this one. All yes, right. exactly. So the answer is <laughs> Hooks Douse. Boom, baby! 223. <laughs> All um, right. Surprisingly, in second place, George Mullen with 209. Mickey Lolich with 207. Okay. A guy that no one would have gotten. Uh, Hal Newhouser with 200. But Jack Morris threw everybody off the scent, 198. Yeah. yeah. Tommy Bridges, uh, 194. Um, he's still active. Um, but not for the Tigers, Justin Verlander with 183. I'll say, I, I, yeah, I forgot about him too. Yeah, Bubble yep. Pug, we did it, kid. We did it. We did it. We did it. Okay, so uh, yeah, Lexi, Lexi, uh, go for the Tigers. Right now, right, nicely done. Yes, all right. <laughs> no, you are, you are. Love it. All right, question two. This is for Bubble Pug. Who is the all-time leader in home runs for the Milwaukee Brewers? 
Ooh. So wait, do we have to drink every time you read a name? <laughs> you, might, you might have to. Robin Yount, Prince Fielder, Gorman Thomas, Storm and Gorman Thomas, or Ryan Braun. Wow, this is this is this is very wow. tough as well. This is this is some good stuff tonight. You got us on here. So let's see who we have in the chat. Anybody uh anybody have any guesses out there? Yeah, sound off, folks. I know <laughs> I know who it is. I've got my choice. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. You ready sure. to see what Bubble Pug says? I'm sure. If you know who it is, you should be up front. You should tell everybody who what your guess Prince is. Prince Fielder, yeah. number two, Prince Fielder. There you go. All right. Okay. Prince Fielder. Solid guess. I, I, all these are solid guesses. Well, Ryan Braun is probably the, the outsider. I don't know. He's been with them for a long time. That's why I was I was thinking either him or uh, Rob Neal. Gorman Thomas is actually a pretty underrated home run hitter there in the 80s. Though. No, it's Prince Fielder, the, you man. Know, you, can't was... deny, you can't deny a superstar like Prince. I... I... Uh, I mean, unfortunately, his career got cut short. Otherwise, he probably would be the leader yeah. all time there. And remember, he played with Texas yeah, for part of his career as well. But, you is- know, the thing for me that, that you know, because I'm, I'm leaning between I'm between Robin Yount and Ryan Brown, but, you know, Robin Yount played only for the Brewers for, like, you know, almost 20 seasons. So I'm like, okay. never really much of a, a super home run hitter. But um, I hate to agree with my son, but I think I'll go with uh, Robin Yount. So um, his name is Prince, but he's not funky in this one. There's uh, there's a lot of people going for Ryan Braun here. Yep. Bubble Pug, definitely. Uh, uh, Bubble Pug. She says that one that she's got it. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Braun yep. is the answer. Uh, 352 home runs for the wow. Brewers. That um, – um, well, yeah, you can change it to you, know, but uh, you'd be wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Way to go, Ian. Hey, Ian just <laughs> proves that you can be pretty and not smart. It's okay. <laughs> wow. Way to, live, way to live the stereotype. Oh, oh <laughs> so uh, Ryan Braun, 352. Now, uh, Jack, are you aware of Ryan Braun's controversy in, in uh, being in this position? No, I'm absolutely not. I, um, I'm, a, I'm aware that he looks like a weird dude. <laughs> so Ryan Braun is one of the, the best hitters ever come through the Brewers. Really? His, his, his problem is that um, he's much like um, A-Rod. He's much like uh, Roger Clemens, Andy Pettit. Oh, he's much like Rafael Palmeiro, who said he absolutely did not do it, right? There exactly. And oh, he had, did steroids. He, um, he had a FedEx uh, uh, sent to him that that he at first denied, then acknowledged, and it, it was it's a whole convoluted thing. And uh, he he it, it again he leads, but we're, we're always talking about like his place in history. Is it going to be um, good? Obviously, he leads uh, the Brewers in career home runs. But I don't think he's going to have any Hall of Fame consideration or anything like that. So really? just because he yeah. just because he, did, he he used some performance enhancing drugs. So that that's he, that's he got where suspended though he actually got. The problem is he got caught. That's that's and suspended. That's the problem. No, no, he. I mean, he looks like a criminal, but <laughs> <laughs> like I said, he's a weird looking dude. But I'm all for PEDs, man. Like who? Like what does it matter? Let it like juice up, boys. Who cares? Go swing the bat. I mean, it's, fun, it's, it's funny that you say that because I used to have the uh, the same thing. Uh, I used to say like juice their brains out. Everybody loves like the the long ball. Everybody sure we, they know the risks going in. Obviously, as I get older, I'm not I'm not on that train anymore. But um, but but yeah, it, it's it does. That was a this is a point in history where it, it, it kind of like the second wave of all this too. Kind of like after the Barry Bonds. Um, oh, so this was after the congressional hearings and all that? Yeah, this yeah. was like uh, 2000, late 2000s, I think. Well, see, let me let me posture it this way. Look at Sylvester Stallone. He's like 88 years old, shredded out, bulky, muscular, athletic. He swears 
by HGH, testosterone, like a very medicated dose of steroids. Yes. Like who cares if it's it's freaking baseball. These guys are millionaires wearing button down <laughs> shirts. Like who cares? So 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 baseball, I mean, let, let's just get it all out there. Baseball has a very checkered past uh, with racism, with drugs, uh, sure. with alcohol, with, with a lot of things. And they haven't handled Wait, it. Wait, you talking about me or baseball? Uh, you, well, you, that's why you love baseball, because you have all these problems, too. Oh, <laughs> okay. I was like, wait. This not racism, about? though. I didn't hear that let's, part. let's clear it up. Not racism, though. <laughs> so – um and, and uh by the way a toilet bowl food review hello everyone to you. Ha thank you for joining us tonight oh my um, gosh we haven't seen toilet bowl food yeah, review in like <laughs> three months we have not so uh and mr soup brings up something too um yeah he was the mvp in 2015 um and and matt kemp uh should have been that i remember when like ken caminiti uh won the MVP, mvp admitted to steroid use that year so this is a thing that this is a real problem in baseball. They want to appear clean um, and, and squeaky clean, um, but it's impossible, especially with um, escalating salaries. And, you know, like these guys are trying to get the edge no matter what it is. I mean, the team that's playing in the World Series, they're vilified for trying to get the competitive edge, you know, to get ahead and would do whatever it takes to get ahead. You know, so this year, pitchers, pitchers with you know the sticky, icky stuff. Yeah, they, every pitcher's being checked this year because of you know because of the competitive edge. So, um, yeah, or, 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 or he says 2011. Um, um, but 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 yeah, so this the, Ryan Braun actually has a very checkered past, um, and he may not be considered for any Hall of Fame uh, consideration, which which is a shame because he was a, a great hitter. Um, great results, um, but he's he looked he's actually looked down upon because of home. steroids. Because of perform, well, we'll say performance enhancers. Sure, it, okay. It could have been but, testosterone, G, uh, GHB. It could have sure. been anything. But like, we can all come together and realize that like that doesn't help you hit a ball. Like that doesn't train you to be a better baseball that, player. That's that's that was always the Barry Bonds thing. It's like you know he yeah. had the natural ability, but it, but the the difference here, Jack, is it turns fly ball out into home runs. Yep. That yeah, is why, why else are we going to go to the why else are we going to go to the stadium if we're not going to go see the long ball? Like I don't want to see a bunch of fly outs. <laughs> Juice Which, up, boys! Juice up. <laughs> <laughs> which which is very interesting jack because we remember when uh so like kevin let me let me have this discussion with you no. we you know what something we don't see anymore is people get excited about pitching matchups right it's all oh, yeah. about hitting all right. about hitting and that all is all scoring. because that's because of 1998 pretty much yeah you know the culture changed at that point Base, people were mad about baseball shutting down in 94 and then what got people back into it was the home run battle. I mean, so, so you know, because the, the, the home run ball is, it's way sexier than, oh, I struck out seven batters in seven innings or whatever, you know? That's going to yeah. get a more casual fan base interested, you know? Yeah. And this is the whole thing, too. Um, uh, you know, if you want to go, yeah. And, and marginal <laughs> players would, would, in their contract years, would go yep. from, making like minimum salary to getting long contracts. Um, you know, and, and one was like, um, Josh Hamilton is a perfect example, but. Oh, I got he one. Had, for you he had other know. problems. He actually had like substance abuse problems. Um, and, but he was a great hitter and destroyed his career as well. Super great hitter. Um, but then they have to eat these contracts. Um, like I said, a rod has like, he's like, super high on, on the home run list and he's not even considered for the home run. Yep. Uh, I'm sorry for the hall of fame. So it, it's, it's, it's a problem. It's a problem. So well, let me give you maybe the best example, Jack. Let me tell you about a guy named Brady Anderson. All right. There you go. Great this example. is after I do the research live here. So he was a, all right, player. So let me tell you is, but well, so let's say he's, he debuted in baseball in 1988. All right. 
1995 at 31 years old. Make sure I got the year right. The most home runs he ever had a season was 21. And all of a sudden, in 1996, at the age of 32, he hit, let me see if I make sure I got this right here. Oh, 50 home runs. 50. The year before that, he went to 16. He went from 16 to 50 in one season. Sure. And then the next year, he went back to 18, 18, 24, 19. Well, he wasn't, he wasn't, getting 19 he wasn't doing enough steroids. That's the problem. And this man. is 1996, sir. Yeah. But, but, but just he also, he also like he when he started, um, he would, he looked like one person and then he came to camp and he looked like Kota Ibushi. Yep. Oh, <laughs> Kota Ibushi <laughs> rules, dude. like he was in, in sports illustrated as like this muscle man. Sure. And, uh, it was, it was insane. And he, there was during that time, like the Oakland A's, um, I remember there's this great, I should find this video because well, here, let me. Yeah, yeah. Let, let me let me. You said Kota Ibushi. <laughs> the hundred dollars in my pocket proves that just because he looks like Kota Ibushi doesn't mean he wins the big game. Okay. <laughs> if you have the talent and you're just juicing a little bit to you know maybe get some more power. Hey. Yep. But it Cowboy but it goes- Jack gets paid. Kevin. But, but it goes back to that thing I was talking before where Will Clark said, like, you want my position. F you. Sure. Yeah. It's it's that. It's yeah. doing whatever it takes to get ahead. And you only have a small window in baseball as well. Right. So yeah. No, you um, can't run you can't run bases your whole life. You know, like it, it's it, a it is expensive. Yes. And, uh, and Mr. Sue says, don't forget go. Brady Anderson's <laughs> yep. Um, yep. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I'm looking at it right there. Yep. Imagine being a better guy in high school. So, yeah. So you're, this is right. It's, it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So it's like, you can yeah. actually get fast tracked. I mean, um, one of the things I, I, I learned in baseball, I remember hearing the coach say this all the time. It doesn't matter. Um, uh, if you can hit, we'll find a place for what you. Was that Even if it's in right field. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't That's matter. Right. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yep. That's for you. There you go. Love it. Love it. Okay, so let's. Um, so we want to dedicate this show to a uh, someone who died. Uh, I think it was on October thirtieth, I believe. Uh, Jerry Remy, uh, nineteen fifty-two to two thousand and one. Uh, I actually have a, a very interesting, uh, I actually went, this was in, uh, in Boston in the airport. This is in 2019. I was actually, uh, coming home and I'm like, Oh my God, Jerry Remy has like a sports bar here in, in the Boston airport. And, uh, they had this, I didn't get to go into it, but I took, I took these pictures. Oh, cool. Yeah. And, um, so let me go back here real quick. Oh, I actually don't have the stats on here. Oh, well. So um, one of the things that I found out about uh, Jerry Remy was that that he didn't have a, a very long career, but he had a very uh, uh, a good career. Started with the Angels, went to the Red Sox. Uh, as you saw, he had a thousand hits. Um, very, very interesting story. After his very first hit, he was picked off at first. Uh, which is a better uh, sort of a bittersweet story, but you know who was also picked off uh, was uh, George Brett in his three thousandth uh, hit. <laughs> so oh, he's, in, he's in good company, right? Oh yeah. He later became a uh, Boston Red Sox uh, uh, announcer, and I think that's where he um, really made his name. He, mm-hmm. So he was he wasn't a, a great longtime player, but um, definitely one of the um, uh, players for the Red Sox that was kind of seen as kind of, I remember when the Red Sox were c- coming up as like, it was like the Carlton Fisk years. I think that he was like stranded on second base when like Carl Yastrzemski was uh, like flew out. And it was like the, the, the closest the Red Sox have gotten to a, a pennant at that time. So um, yeah. So that he just died recently. So salute. Yeah. Jerry I, believe it, I believe he had a long battle of cancer and, I, I read a lot. I saw a lot of people on Twitter from the Boston area. It seemed like he was really beloved in that Boston area. 
you know? Yeah. He, uh, it's all a friend of the show, Fred Lynn mentioning it. And that's how I found out he passed away. I was like, Oh, what's this shame. It seemed like so everyone wait. was re you're really fondly remembered by people in that area. Yep. And then Fred, Fred Lynn, that's, that's the husband of the woman you assaulted at a baseball yes. card show, right? Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, I mean, rest in power, Jeremy Remy, Remy, but. Yeah. So a uh, player from the late seventies, early eighties. And uh, so salute. And uh, we, we remember you very well. And uh, yeah, it, it's always sad to see, uh, you know, 1952 doesn't seem like a long time. So it's like, uh, yeah. Make hay while you can. It's not a, it's not a long time. Trust me. <laughs> so that is it uh, from the beer baseball blog. If you like what we're doing and want to support us, uh, go to our Patreon page, uh, search beer baseball. We also have uh, uh, stickers, buttons, beer coasters on our Etsy page, search beer baseball. Here we are on social media on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitch guys. Uh, any last words before you take off? Any last words? I is this is this it for me? <laughs> we can only hope. <laughs> I, yeah, exactly. I know. Exactly. It's a great hat, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah this is oh, actually a team from uh, I think Taiwan. I believe it was. I got a friend of mine gave me this. Uh, the Lamigo the Lamigo monkeys. monkeys. Yes. I got this, and I actually got a t like a towel, like a towel from them. I'm like, all right, cool. I, I'm like, I have I, a towel I, down I here worn too. That too, but then, then we really lose viewers. I should wear that. I'm gonna. I'll wear that hat on the uh, happy hour. My other, my Lamingo uh, hat. All right, Lamingo monkeys right on. Right from on. Taiwan. Yes, sir. Yes, Jack. I any, mean, you uh, can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Hey, I'm doing my plug. You can sorry. follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Lock and Low L O K N L O L L. And the Braves are about are really close to doing it. Let's not. Hopefully, I don't jinx it like I did the other night. You know. And we hope to see you all Saturday. And don't forget, if you need some humor. Hopefully he's updated his jokes. It's been a few weeks. Call Jack of the Joke Man's hotline. His joke line at 516-922-WINE. It's been around since 1978. About a tenth of my life or so. But cheers, guys. I, I want to say thank you to everybody that is in, involved in this show. You're in the chat. You guys, You guys really, really make our week. Just thank you so much. This is... This is such a high point in our week is being able to just do this and interact with you guys. So thank you so much. Um, please support Kevin. Um, he's calling people on the phone. <laughs> he's senility, he yeah, no, no. Senility is finally starting to, to, to get in. You can find him on social media at lock and low. L -O -K I already said -L -L -L. that. Speaking of senility, you don't even know what plug I just did. Plug yourself in your set, sir. You can you can find me at, at confirmed outlaw. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Michael. You guys, you guys make my life better, all of you. Thank so you. thank you so much. Let's rock and roll. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much. Woo. And um I'm I'm going to end with this. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Good night, everyone. Take care. We'll see you next Tuesday.